Hi everyone, welcome to Preschool Parade. Today we're talking about magical creatures. I'm Miss Sylvia. I'm from the Miller Branch of the Howard County Library System. Hi everyone, my name is Miss Heidi and I'm also from the Miller Branch of the Howard County Library System. And just like Miss Sylvia said, we are talking about magical creatures today. And we have a fun book to share with you called Magical Creatures. Who do you see on that front cover? Unicorn. I see a unicorn. Look how pretty. Very Look at all those pretty. colors. I love that. And that's only one of the creatures inside. I wanted to show you one more. Look at that. Who is he? <gasps> it's a wizard. wizard. Does, he have, does he have a wand? I think he has a wand and he's showing some magic there, Miss Sylvia. Very cool. And the wizard is definitely a magical creature. And I know Miss Sylvia wants to show you one too. I do. So another magical creature is this. Oh. It's a genie, a genie. And I actually have another genie here too. May oh my goodness. From Shimmer and Shine. So that's I, a genie as well. I love that, Miss Sylvia. There's so many different magical creatures, boys and girls. So we have a poem to introduce you to some more of the creatures that were in that book. So here's one. I'm going to see if you can guess along with Miss Sylvia what they are. Here's one. It looks like it maybe it does it have fire coming out of its mouth? It does. It's a dragon. It is a Very dragon. Cool. The magical creatures in this book look like they're made from things you can find in your house. So that's why it looks like there's a big eggplant there for the dragon. I like that. Okay, that's one. How about this one? Oh, a cute little unicorn. A it's cute a unicorn. one. Good job. Number three. Oh, beautiful mermaid. Look at the tail. Yeah, I love the that. Mermaid. Mermaid's magical creature. And number four. Uh oh. Oh, ooh, a giant. Giant wow. is magical. Look how much bigger he is than you or I. Wow. Four. And number five is a. Oh, a cute little fairy. Look at her, and she has like paper clip wings. I really think that's so, so cute. creative. Yeah. So we have five magical creatures here. Let's count them, and then we'll do a little poem. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Awesome. Five magical creatures, but. You're going to start our poem with just one today. Ready? One magical creature was lonely as he flew, but along came a unicorn friend. And now there are two. two. Okay. Two magical creatures. They were flying happily. When a mermaid swam up, and now there are three. Three magical creatures. Good job. Three magical creatures. They covered their ears at a dragon's roar. Oh my goodness. Oh. But who? The giant really oh. liked it. So now there are. Four. Four. One, two, three, four. I think the dra the giant liked it because he roars sometimes too, Miss Sylvia. Probably. Four magical creatures so happy to be alive. But in flew a fairy. And now there are five. Five. Five magical creatures all together now as friends. But do you know what they did next? Oh, oops, it's the end. So you get to create that yourself. You have make to up make up your own up. next step. Don't worry, that's right. Five yeah. magical creatures. They were a lot of fun, weren't they? They were so fun. And so just a reminder, those came from this book, Magical Creatures by Amy Chapman. Very cool. All right, so for the next thing, we have a song 
and it's called We Are Magical Creatures. It's to the tune of I'm a Little Teapot. So I will sing that one time. And you know what? I'm going to turn myself into a little magical creature. Miss Sylvia, you're a unicorn. Uh, yes, a unicorn it. with shamrocks and sparkles because Beautiful. magical creatures are so sparkly. All right, here we go. We're magical creatures, sparkly and bright. Please don't be scared, we don't bite. We like to play pretend, we really love songs. We can tell stories all day long. Yay! I love that. They love can that. tell stories all day long. And guess what? You said something about they love songs, Miss Sylvia. I found a creature. Look at him. So now he might just look like a little goat to you, but this is what makes him magic because of his song. Listen. Sing. Oh, I love that little magical goat. That is so funny. I just had to share about him. Thank you for sharing. That is so cool. I love that. Me too. So we're going to talk about a special magical creature next. And you may have recognized her. Miss Heidi showed a picture from our book already. But it's a fairy. And this book is Fairy Sci Science by Ashley Spires. Look at her, she's so adorable. And she's not your typical fairy. Her name's Esther. And you know what? Most fairies believe in magic, but Esther, she only believes in science. And so she is not your ordinary fairy. She is actually the only fairy in Pixieville who does believe in science and she prefers facts and data instead of wishing on stars. But then there has a problem, a problem with a tree and they need to figure out how to save the tree because it's wilting and wilting means the leaves are coming off and it's kind of sick. So Esther and the other fairies use some different strategies to figure out how to save the tree. And you'll have to find out, is it just science or is it a little bit of magic too? So that is Fairy Science by Ashley Spires. Oh, I love that, Miss Sylvia. It was such a fun book. Yes. Now, I think we know something about fairies a little bit, but here's a book that really tells you about it, the truth about Fairies, and this is by J. Angelique Johnson. But boys and girls, are fairies real? No, they are pretend. But this book does talk about how some people came to think they were real. And the book also might talk about what do fairies look like? And it might point out some characteristics that they have in different books, boys and girls, fairies look like a lot of different things, but I think mostly they do have wings though, usually they fly. But this book might tell you a little bit more facts about a make-believe creature called a fairy. And they're definitely magical. Definitely magical. Love that. Thank you, Miss Heidi. You're and welcome. So we are gonna move into another magical creature. Can you believe it? There are so many magical creatures we could talk about today. And this one was also in our first magical creatures book, a giant. And this book's called Giant Dance Party. It's by Betsy Bird. And here we see the giant, but then we also see this little friend here and her name's Lexi. Now Lexi, she starts out at the beginning of the book and she says, I quit ballet. She quits dancing because you know what? She loved to dance at home, but she got stage fright when it was time for her performances. So she decided she wanted to do something different. And what she ended up doing was she's like, I can teach people to dance. So she came up with signs that said free dance lessons. 
But you know who showed up? It was a whole group of giants. And wow. she said, what? Everybody knows giants can't dance, but they're like, please give us lessons. And so she does. We'll have to find out what happens at their recital. Do they perform? Does Lexi perform? Hope it ends up well, we shall see. So that is a fun story, Giant Dance Party by Betsy Bird. That makes me laugh, Miss Sylvia. I yeah. didn't know giants could dance either. I know, but you never know. You can find out, look there, they're all dancing on the front cover, some too, who knows? Uh -oh. <laughs> Who knows? That is so funny. Give me an idea. Maybe we could do a little dance break and we could do a couple of dance moves from the book. So there were lots of moves that the Giants enjoyed doing themselves. And so Miss Heidi and I thought it would be super fun if we could act out some of them with you. So look, they all have their own signature dance moves. <laughs> So one of them was the chicken dance. Have you done the chicken dance before, Miss Heidi? I've done the chicken dance before, yes. It's so fun because you get to start out like this and then you flap your wings and then you do a little twist. So I'm gonna hum the, the song with it while we do it. You ready? Here we go. <laughs> One more time. So that is the that chicken is so dance. Fun, Miss Sylvia. And I think one of the other dances in there was the twist. And that's an older song, but it's come on, let's do the twist. And they twist and twist and twist. I brought my friend Shrek here to help me. He is kind of a magical creature. And that was in the book too, an ogre, but he's also kind of a giant because he's so big. Are you gonna help me do the twist? Are you ready, everyone? Here we go. Come on, let's do the twist, twist, twist. Let's do the twist, twist, twist. And the twist is so much fun, boys and girls. You can keep going high with the twist or low to the ground with the twist and do a lot of good exercise. So I hope. A giant dance party is something you won't just read at home, but you'll do it at home too, right? right. Yes. Can you imagine those giants doing those dance moves? No. <laughs> I think that is so much fun. <laughs> okay. We do have a lot of magical creatures to talk about boys and girls. So I'm going to talk about dragons for a minute. And there is a really fun book that the library has It's called there's a dragon in your book. This is by Tom Fletcher. And he is so cute because he starts out as just a little egg. But look, you can see it cracking. It's getting ready to hatch. It says, there's an egg in your book. He's ready to hatch. But then it says, whatever you do, don't turn the page because you don't know what kind of egg it is. So maybe maybe we should just close the book, Miss Sylvia. But of course you're gonna wanna turn the page and then you might see, oh, look at him. Oh my goodness. A baby dragon hatch. So and cute. The book might tell you, tickle her little nose. Uh oh, but when you tickle her nose, what usually happens if you tickle your nose? <laughs> Yes, you want to sneeze and that's what happens. Uh-oh, but what happens when a dragon sneezes? Sometimes there can be fire. There might end up being a fire in your book and you might have to do all kinds of exercises with the book to put the fire out from that little innocent dragon. So this is a really, really cute book. I really like that. I hope you check it out at the library. And then, there's another one called, You Don't Want a Dragon. And I think that goes without saying from the other book. And this is written by Ann Dykeman. Look at him, like you might think you want a dragon, but you don't want to. And this book talks about, uh-oh, now you've done it. 
What happened if you wanted a dragon? I told you not to wish for a dragon. And guess what? He says, have you forgotten what happened when you wished for a unicorn? Miss Sylvia, there's another book about wishing for a unicorn. And I think you have that. So you have to read this book to find out why you don't want to wish for a dragon. That's right. And like Miss Heidi said, there is another book by the same author, You Don't Want a Unicorn. And inside, it's the same thing. Don't wish for a unicorn. The beginning, little boy's making his wish. The pond, at, at the fountain, sorry. And you know what? The author says, wait, that's a big mistake. You don't want a unicorn. They may seem all shiny and exciting, but really, oh man, he says, trust me, you cannot house train a unicorn. This is just my favorite, favorite silly part. It says, look at the oh unicorn my goodness. doing things and burping. Look at burps rainbows. Well, that is kind of cool, Sylvia. <laughs> <laughs> so you will have to read to find out why you should not want a unicorn. So that is a fun. That is book. fun. I'm, I'm sorry, Miss Sylvia, but it still kind of makes me want to wish for one, right? <laughs> if they were real, that would be so fun. <laughs> That's true. And I have another set of books that have to do with unicorns to keep up with that theme. And these are really awesome. So this is a series of books about little unicorn. So there's little unicorn is shy, Little unicorn is scared, little unicorn is angry, and little unicorn is sad. And this series of books is by Ariel Qian Chao Chine. And I love these because not only does it tell you what happens when little unicorn feels these different emotions, it also gives you a way to solve the problem. So I was going to take a look at this one, you, Little Unicorn is Sad with You. And at the, in the back, toward the end, the author shares a breathing exercise that you can use to help blow away the cloud of sadness that Little Unicorn is feeling. Do you want to try it with me? Yes, please. Yes. OK, so if you're feeling sad, this is something we can do. So number one. Little unicorn closes his eyes and he is picturing a giant rain cloud in his head, but he breathes in through his mouth to fill his belly. Next, he's going to hold his breath and hold his nose to think about his cloud. Last, little unicorn blows out very hard through his nose and blows away his rain cloud of sadness. And he does it at least three times because it usually takes little unicorn about three times of that exercise to start to feel better and breathe normally. And look at the rainbow. His rainbow mane came back because he's feeling happy again, and then the beautiful sun can shine in. So that is just an awesome strategy. Each book has a slightly different one of what you can use if you're feeling some big feelings and you need help thinking about calming down. That was wonderful, Miss Sylvia. I love that. Thanks. You know what? I thought of an activity that we could do that was related to Little Unicorn um, that also can help you if you need help calming down or just relaxing, if you have a lot of energy, really good strategy. And this is called drawing your breath. So what you'll need for this is a piece of paper. It can be big, it can be small, it's up to you. Um, and some writing utensils. So I'm using crayons, but you could use pencil, markers, whatever it is that you have that you'd like to use. Uh, and so the first thing you need to do is if you think about how you're feeling. So let's say I'm feeling angry. I just had to share a toy. I really don't want to. I just want to play by myself. And I'm feeling really angry. So I'm going to use this red crayon because I'm just feeling a really big emotion. And when I feel angry, <laughs> That's 
how I feel. I just feel really frustrated and angry. I don't want to be bothered with anyone. So I color that feeling. And then I have to think about what do I want to feel like? How can I get to a place of calm and relaxed? And what I can do is take some breaths like little unicorn. And then I'll get a different color. And I chose this green because, or teal, it reminds me of calm, maybe like ocean waves, relaxing. And so as I'm breathing, I'm going to start drawing my breath. And you can do that over and over. It's kind of hard to see. I'm going to use a darker color. Let's see, a darker version of the green. Let's try this one. Is that better? Let's see. Yeah, okay, we'll make it work. So those are my calmer breaths. And so as you're drawing, it helps you relax some. And then you can kind of think of what you need to do next so that you feel better or move on to the next thing. And I really wanted this to show up together. There we go. That's better. Breathing. So drawing your breath. So you can start off angry and then you can end up calmer. Yeah. So that was the activity I thought of that we could share today. I love that, Miss Sylvia. That I feel calmer just walking through that with you right now and just take practicing breathing and getting ready. I love that. Well, my craft is about dragons because I talked about dragons so much today, but they breathe out too. But mm -hmm. what do they usually breathe out? They breathe out fire usually. Mm -hmm. So I just took a little toilet paper roll and I covered it with green paper. And then I just made like a little dragon head. Can you see him there? Yeah, so he has the two little nose nostrils and two eyes. But boys and girls, you can find anything around your house that works. Little pom poms, mm -hmm. or you can cut out green circles and just tape them up. And then I found some ribbon that looked like fire to come out of the dragon's mouth. But if you have paper, you can cut up ribbons in your paper of orange and red and yellow to look like fire. And then you can practice taking some breaths. And you can roar out a roar through there. Now, my ribbon doesn't move very much, but I think if you had tissue paper or other kinds of paper in your dragon's mouth, you would see them ripple and roar along with your breath. So be creative and make your dragon any way you want to. You can pretend to be one yourself too. That's awesome. That's another great way to get out some feelings too. Exactly. Or just to pretend to be a dragon, which is also fun. So I love that. Okay. I think we're getting close to the end. I have one more set of books I'd like to share, which just are, I mean, what's not to love. This series is awesome. It's by Fiona Watt. It's the That's Not My series. So there's a dragon like Miss Heidi has. And then there's also this one is That's Not My Fairy. That's a little harder to see because it's so sparkly. Uh, and That's Not My Fairy. Her dress is too shiny. And they're all like touch and feel pieces and super exciting to look at. And there's another one that's that's not my unicorn too so there's a few magical creatures that you could check out and that was another little series these are found in the board book section with w just so you know okay we done almost down to the end we have time for one more song yes okay so this song is if you're a unicorn and you know it or if you're a dragon and you know it. And we love it because there's so much creativity that's there, you can use your imagination. So I'm gonna pretend I'm a unicorn and we're going to put our horns in and then take our horns out. So if you have a headband, you could wear it, but I like how Miss Heidi has her finger for her horn, that works too. Or if you have a unicorn, use your unicorn. So that works too. Yes. Before you start, 
This yes. is this one say, if you're a unicorn and you know it, shake your horn. Yes, if you're a unicorn and you know it, shake your horn. All right, here we go. If you're a unicorn and you know it, shake your horn. If you're a unicorn and you know it, shake your horn. If you're a unicorn and you know it, then your magic will surely show it. If you're a unicorn and you know it, shake your horn. All right. Yay, I love that. Well, boys and girls, let's try a dragon. If you're a dragon and you know it, give a roar. I have here my big dragon friend. If I go back far enough, you might be able to see him all the way wow. to his tail, but he's definitely a happy magical creature. So if you're a dragon and you know it, give a roar. Here we go. If you're a dragon and you know it, give a roar. roar. If you're a dragon and you know it, give a roar. roar. If you're a dragon and you know it, then your magic will really show it. If you're a dragon and you know it, give a roar. roar. Wow. Oh, I had so much fun, Miss Sylvia. <laughs> Me too. Thank you for joining us today for Preschool Parade Magical Creatures. We hope you had a great time and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.